Um, thanks everybody for joining us this afternoon. We are very excited to uh, officially release uh, Barcode Reader uh, integrated with NextGen. This is really our, our first session. Um, we, we introduced it at UGM last fall, and uh, there's been just a ton of work between our organization and NextGen to get us to this point uh, that we're at today. We're excited to give you an update on where we are um, as well as talk about uh, the release cycle and what that's going to look like starting today as it moves through um, this fall and, and towards UGM. Uh, so just to get started, would like to um, first start with just telling you a little bit about us and who we are. So um, today, uh, again, I'm Craig Luce. I'm the president here of EHR Integration Services, and I'm going to take you through um, a little bit about who we are, and, and uh, we're a little bit new to the next gen space, so get you a little introduction of who we are, talk a little bit about the product, and then I'm going to turn it over to Rochelle Herbert, who is one of our solution specialists, and uh, Rochelle is Miss Barcode. Uh, she is going to take you through the product start to finish, um, show you uh, very interactive how it works currently as we're connected into the uh, next gen sandbox area. Um, so again, just quick, uh, quick agenda. Uh, once we're done with the demo, we're going to talk a little bit about what's coming up, right? So we have a product that's re ready and uh, is being released as we speak. Uh, we have some new features that are coming up here very, very soon this fall, uh, as well as uh, new modules planned uh, as we continue to move out. So we're going to take some time talking about what's coming up. And then, uh, as Michelle said, we'll move into a, a Q&A session and open up the phone lines. So again, just real briefly on who we are, EHR Integration, our focus uh, since we began the business about 13 years ago is really looking at um, what we call the human approach to healthcare uh, and really looking at workflows and technologies and how they all integrate together. And of course, that sounds pretty simple and straightforward, um, but we have found um, that no matter where we go from practice to practice, it's amazing. Uh, really some simple tweaks and, and changes from workflows can uh, lead to huge efficiencies. Sometimes those workflow changes are electronic, sometimes they're human, uh, sometimes it's a combination of both. And you know, again, today the barcode reader application is gonna be a great example of where it's really uh, in a slight introduction of technology um, that we're all familiar with. Barcode readers are used obviously in grocery stores and everywhere, and if you ever are in a hospital, um, actually scanning vials and so on. This is not new technology. Uh, it's really just getting it introduced into the workflow in the ambulatory space, and that's our focus. That's what we're gonna be talking about, and uh, you know, again, that's really the focus of our group uh, in general. Again, real short history on, on us from an a organization perspective. Um, although we're newer to the next gen client base, last year was our first UGM that we um, uh, that we uh, attended. We have been in business for 13 years. Our initial focus was on the all scripts and IDX or GE healthcare space. Um, and that's really where we've spent um, probably the past 10 to, to 12 years, or our first 10 to 12 years. Um, around year 11 or so, we really uh, started expanding our focus, diversifying across other spaces. Um, and in, in the NextGen space, we became a natural uh, strategic partner with NextGen um, because of their acquisition of Eagle Dream Health. Uh, we have been uh, a long time strategic partner with Eagle Dream Health since that company's inception. And again, it really made us a natural partner with NextGen, um, not only in that space, but understanding what we've done in the API development space across other uh, vendors and other organizations and what we might be able to do here. So that really is our focus um, and we truly look forward to, to meeting and, and really getting involved with the next gen users and, and moving things forward. <laughs> Uh, we provide a, a variety of services across the practice continuum, as you see here. Today, like I said, we're really going to stay focused on the clinical workflow. We're going to take a look at the barcode reader application. Um, our website is full of other information that you can read about us, but just to stay really honed in, uh, we're going to be looking at barcode today. So again, we're going to take a, a look at the background of it. We're going to talk about some client successes, although the integration into NextGen is new. This is not a new application. Um, so we really want to take, uh, take you through the journey that we've been on uh, and show you a demonstration. 
And really, to, to start it all off, um, I wanted to highlight uh, Murfreesboro Medical. Uh, Murfreesboro has been a longtime client and friend of ours uh, for many, many years. Uh, they happen to use the Allscripts TouchWorks uh, EHR. But I highlight them because not only are they a great user of Barcode Reader, um, they're actually the reason why Barcode Reader exists. And uh, it, from, from a, an inception perspective, Dr. Nick Cote, who's now their chief medical uh, informatics officer, he approached our organization back in 2014. Um, and really was looking to have a create, uh, you know, have a, an application created uh, in his words to get his nurses back. That's how he presented it to us. He was truly sick of the time that his nurses were spending on data entry, um, all the clicks and all of the manual typing that needed to be done for every shot that was, uh, that was given in his clinic. Um, he is obviously a practicing physician as well as the CMIO. Um, you know, he went on to tell us that the data entry was often hurried, obviously leading to errors and incompleteness. Um, he had issues with billing uh, any time after, afterwards from a research perspective, if they needed to research perhaps a, a medication recall or something by lot number, uh, they found just many, many uh, different areas of, of human uh, entry issues. And so, so with that, he came to us and said, I'd really like to have this application uh, that could help answer you know, some of these problems. So to be honest with you, we created a very custom application specific to his workflows and what they were looking for. And, uh, you know, again, as often happens, people talk to each other, right? Organizations go to user conferences and so on, and they start sharing, you know, what they have going on. And of course, with Dr. Cote, frankly, he was pretty proud at what he came up with and said, here's the problem we solved. And based upon that problem, we had many other clients uh, contacting us. And honestly, um, shortly after that, we commercialized the, the product, really standardizing the product itself, its in installation, its support processes. As you can imagine, taking a custom application to make it a commercial application, it's not an overnight process. Um, but through that process, we were able to learn a lot, learn a lot across other clients and their specific workflows, and really standardize, you know, again, what, what it is that uh, we were delivering. And with that, I like to say, you know, again, the application barcode reader, it was born. Um, so from there, you know, we go on to where we are today. So again, it was actually in early 2015 that we uh, completed that transition to go from a custom application to a commercial-based application. As it says here, it was first released uh, into the Allscripts TouchWorks uh, EHR. Have 20 plus organizations using it of a wide variety of sizes. Um, our largest user, we, we do run transactional reports, as you'll see us talk about here um, throughout the presentation. And you know, our largest user last year delivered over 100,000 medications um, with, with the scanning and the process that Rochelle is going to take you through. So we're very excited about the application. And again, in, in the end of the day, hopefully saving you time, energy, and money um, by providing you a much more efficient way to document and process. So as we like to say, saving click, clicks saves time, right? So that's really been our focus. Um, we have done some time and efficiency studies across our clients, not only by polling them and asking specific information on how things uh, have worked, whether it be delivering the actual immunization or medication um, to, you know, again, correcting the data entry in, in how that process works. We've taken that information, we've compared it against the data, the actual transactions that they've put into the system. And what we're finding here, as you see on the screen, is that um, we're seeing roughly a 33% increase in immunizations. Um, and as you can see here, it says it saves about 4.5 minutes per immunization. The key part to this is not to think that it takes you four and a half minutes to deliver an immunization, right? Um, we, we know that's not the case, but it's really looking at the efficiencies that are realized across the entire vertical of the process. So whether that is um, what we have focused here on better documentation, correctly placing the zero for an NDC for anyone that is familiar uh, as we're recording that for medication administration, um, making sure that the NDCs are formatted correctly is extremely important for a wide variety of reasons. 
um, easier and quicker data entry, right? I, again, the goal is, is to save you clicks so that you're not touching your keyboard, so you're not touching your mouse, and you're doing everything you can from a scanning perspective. And then where we see the most time saved is on the time that you have to do that research for that recalled med or perhaps a shot that was given incorrectly um, based upon the, the medical record documentation. And by ensuring that the documentation is pristine, uh, the time and energy that is saved on the research is really where we're seeing that efficiency across the vertical. Uh, just another highlight here of one of our client successes in North Bend. Um, I'd like to, to really highlight North Bend Medical, and as you can see here, as, as Michelle said, we'll be following up with this recording afterwards, and each one of these uh, client success, success stories actually has a video specific to them embedded here within uh, the presentation that you'll receive. So you can see it in their own words on what the application has done for their organization. Um, but not only is North Bend one of our strongest users of the application, but what was really fantastic is they knew what they wanted right out of the gate. They knew, if you read through some of the quotes here from Julie, um, they knew they had a real human data entry error issue. They were seeing it every day, having issue reading the tiny print uh, on the vials, making sure the NDCs were um, uh, were actually formatted correctly, and at one point she actually says that ensuring the NDCs were entered correctly was actually a losing battle. Um, and so by the introduction of the barcode reader application, not only have we made from an efficiency perspective um, a simpler process for them, but likely, and, and what she really highlighted the most, was raising their organization in, in Oregon to what is called the gold status in the Oregon Alert System, which is ensuring 95% or more accuracy with the data that they are submitting, specifically around NDC and lot numbers. Um, so again, that's just an example of what the product uh, can do for you. And as you can see here, the theme of what I keep saying is efficiency, right? This application is about making your organization more efficient, but it's not just about the delivery of the actual immunization or medication, but over the overall process uh, in general. However, with that said, delivering the immunization is also equally as important to make it efficient. And as you can see here on the screen, we take you through basically a four-step process where you're going to actually be choosing the immunization uh, from the list of the current order. You're going to scan the vial. So once that scanner hits your hand, our goal is, is that you'll never set down the scanner. So you'll scan the vial to bring in certain information into the application. Then we'll have an additional scan sheet that is specific to your organization with very specific barcodes on it that Rochelle will take you through. And then even instead of clicking the save and continue button uh, in our application, we have a barcode that will do that for you. So again, overall goal is the scanner never leaves your hand unless the nurse, of course, is actually you know, providing the, uh, the actual immunization into the patient. And then once they're done, they're gonna pick that scanner back up. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Rochelle, uh, have you take, it, take you through the application where it stands today, and then we'll talk about what's coming up in the near future. Michelle, you want to switch it over to Rochelle? Yep. Does everybody see my screen? Can everybody hear me? Fantastic. It is up, and we hear you, Rochelle. Perfect. Okie dokie. So, um, like Craig mentioned, I'm going to actually run through the next-gen software um, and how easy the process of scanning in those barcodes actually becomes. And it really enhances and um, streamlines your workflow every single day by the efficiencies it makes through just using the scanner. So I'm showing you just a test patient within our um, sandbox. So you can see here. I have a couple orders. The ordering process in itself is going to remain the same way from NextGen. And so I'll use this varicella as my example today. So you can see that I have a pending order. I have that sitting out there, but there's no administrative data sitting on that yet. So traditional would be you're going to go in, you're going to manually look at that tiny little vial. You're going to put in all those different requirements for lot, manufacturer, et cetera. And so, like Craig said, we are just going to take a lot of those away by using the 
barcodes right in front of us or on the vial itself. So after the order has been placed, you'll use this template, as I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with, and you'll actually go launch over to this barcode app. So as this launches, oops, I have another one open, my bad. So as this launches here, um, you're going to see that those same orders that I just had showing are actually up and right available for you to actually click and finish out that and complete that order. So the varicella is the one that I just talked about. So as you click through that varicella, um, it's actually going to open up a screen that has those same items within. I'll explain this screen kind of step by step and then I'll run through one more to show how quick and easy it can be. So the amount here, um, this is a screen you can either choose to type in that specific amount or use a barcode. I know there's some variants to like if you were going to do a um, flu vaccine that you need 0 0.25 instead of the 0 0.5 full dose. Um, for those reasons, we have just left that so you can either scan a barcode or actually type that in. Down here on this screen, the scanner area, this is our key area to get all of that barcode knowledge into. So as I pick up that individual vial and I go to scan in my varicella, I click there and you're gonna see a couple things just happen. So it automatically added my lot number, it automatically added my NDC number, and it automatically put my expiration there. So all of that comes into play. I'm gonna go back to that scanner box. I'm gonna magically click in that says, um, I need my milliliters to also show that 0.5 milliliters. I need my manufacturer to come in there. And so now that that manufacturer goes in there, Craig also mentioned the ability for it to check and make sure that NDC number had the right zero in the right position. So as most people know, NDC numbers on medications or immunizations only contain 10 digits. For billing purposes, they need to take, contain 11 digits. And so therefore, every single NDC number has a different pattern scheme on it. Merck happens to be a 442 pattern. Therefore, that zero is going to be stay in that same first position. If it was um, a 532 pattern, that might go in the sixth or the tenth depending on where that goes. So we're taking that, oh shoot, where does that go? I know I have to get to 11 out of that whole um, process so that we can guarantee that that information is stored correctly. Let's come back over here to my scanner box. Like Craig said too, um, we have different um, scanners and areas that you can put within. So I just scanned in the route to show that I am now. I'm going to scan in the left side. At this point, if you choose, you can always type in a strength or a brand. Um, it's kind of up to you whether you want to put those in. Those are fields within your next gen. So if you utilize those, you can type within those. If there's something that a barcode can get created so that you don't have to pick up that mouse, ideally that's what we would do as well. A little bit more just about the screen. You're going to see that obviously the name of the drug comes right across the top. It links to the same encounter. So I have all these encounters over here linked to that 8-7 encounter. It's linking all of that information in the exact same way. It's also saying what provider ordered that immunization. And then I, as a user, I'm logged in as the sandbox user. So we're actually capturing, hey, Rochelle Admin, or sandbox UGM, was who actually did that administration. So we're capturing all that to a log file in the background as well. <clears throat> One thing just to add that I like to say, and I'll go through this whole process without as much talking here in a second. If you found out that, oh shoot, we just switched that and now we're using Pfizer instead, you always have the capability to drop down and adjust a manufacturer, a route, et cetera. So you're gonna see all your different options. Again, we wanted to take those clicks away we wanted just the simplicity of clicking that barcode. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hit save and continue using a barcode, so I'm gonna click on it. And it's going to bring up the next one within my list. I think it is here, we'll let it go. In my MMR. MMR. 
So again, without as much talking now, I'm just going to run through that same exact process that you just saw here, scanning in my milliliter, scanning in my manufacturer, scanning in my scanning in my vial, scanning in my left eye, my IM. And again, you'll see that no particular order, you can scan those in whatever order you want. And then I'm going to click save. Once that actually all completes here then, you're going to see that unless I hit save, I already have those two orders that have been removed. So that completed that process, as well as I had two orders yet that I haven't done. So it's kind of just always talking through that API back and forth through next gen. So everything can be um, documented correctly. And so now I'm going to actually pop over the orders module and just do a quick refresh. So Varicella was just pending. That was one that I just scanned in. <laughs> and you're going to see down here now that all of that lot, expiration, manufacturer, route, all of that was entered as well as who entered it, where it was entered, et cetera. Um, if I go to my MMR, just to show this as well, so same exact thing, all that information was entered. So easy steps, easy process, um, definitely takes the um, small vial viewing and everything out of that way by just using the barcode scanners. So I'll turn it back over to Craig. Fantastic, thanks Rochelle. And I will just wait for the screen to get passed back over to me. There we go. All right, we're back in business. Fantastic. So that is the application that exists today. As you could tell, very focused on immunization. That was our initial release. We broke the application up into three major modules, the immunization module, the medication administration or the med admin uh, module, uh, as well as um, looking at the inventory module specific to um, particular integration points with the next gen inventory module as well. So the first release, uh, as you can see, is ready uh, and is already currently being deployed with immunizations itself. Uh, coming up next, is going to be MedAdmin. That's going to be available here in the fall of 2019, uh, literally in the next couple of months. Um, we're in the middle of developing and testing that uh, application right now. So it's going to have a lot of the same uh, functionality as you just saw from an immunization perspective and that ability to scan in all the appropriate uh, documentation, do the NDC code reconciliation as, as Rochelle did such a great job um, uh, explaining. We also realized as part of this process, um, again, it's just continually evaluating our application that we needed to do a little bit more work on the back end and middleware specifically uh, around uh, upgrading to some of the latest frameworks based upon some API changes, um, just really optimizing the architecture structure overall. Uh, we're constantly looking to improve uh, our auditing, our auditing capabilities, and obviously security in and of itself. Um, so as part of the med admin release that you're going to see coming up, um, this has all been a focus of the development team and is all getting packaged together. Also as part of that is a brand new UI refresh. So from a user interface perspective, as you can see here, what Rochelle showed you was showing you the immunization list, this area right here, and a listing of the immunizations. And then once you clicked on the immunization, it brought you to a different screen. Um, we've heard feedback from our current client base, as well as just looking at uh, the product constantly over and over again ourselves, in that we needed to optimize our own workflow, right? We can be even more efficient 
the, in our own application itself. And so we have this major redesign that we're doing right here. And so this is, uh, you know, a screenshot of what the up and coming uh, application is uh, a proximity of what it's going to look like. Um, it's going to increase your speed and your user experience, right? So not only from an, upwork and, uh, an upgrade in the framework perspective behind the scenes to increase the overall speed of the application, uh, the application itself inherently just showing you everything on one screen is definitely going to uh, really optimize your workflow. On the initial load, you're going to see that it's going to populate populate the left-hand menu over here. This is going to be configurable on whether you see immunizations, med admin, or both. Uh, then once you have selected a particular immunization, as you can see here, the first one is selected, you're going to go through the scanning process exactly the same way as Rochelle uh, had highlighted to you by having your cursor here in the scanner box and clicking the actual scanner is going to work your way right through the process. Um, when you go to hit the Save button, it's going to do some validation on the screen itself. Is the NDC in an appropriate format based upon the manufacturer that you have selected? Are all your required fields actually filled in? It's not going to allow you to leave the screen without doing some validation, uh, some data validation itself. And then once you actually do complete that item, instead of taking you back to another screen, you're going to actually just see it disappear here from the left-hand side of the screen. So again, think of this as a task list, if you will, and knowing you have six things to deliver potentially here, um, you're never going to leave the screen. It's all going to be done here as you work through one by one by one. So again, we're very, very excited about the uh, the up uh, the upcoming and improved user interface. That too is going to be delivered um, on or about the same time as as medication administration. So again, all of this, as you can see, we have a lot that not only we are releasing today and that we have already in motion, but really excited about what's coming up in the next couple of months uh, as we move forward with the application. And then on the inventory module side, first of all, we, we simply wanted to acknowledge that there is a lot of interest from the clients on how we can actually help in integrating and potentially reconciling with the next-gen inventory module. Uh, with that, this is still in our long-term scope, and as it says here, um, there, there is more design and actually more client input that we really need. What are the problems we're looking to solve? Where are the pain points in the next-gen inventory module? and how can we help. Um, so we're going to be pulling for more of that information. If you want to be involved with that, you're going to see some contact information at the end. We'd love to have your input. Um, and honestly, NextGen would love to have your input. We want to work together between our organizations and really look at how we can help solve what the specific needs are. And as it stands today, we've heard of a wide variety of issues in, in, in problem areas, if you will, of how we could make that overall process more efficient. So um, although that's still in our focus, short term, short term right now, initial release of the application, what we will be providing is a monthly transactional data report. So think of it as an Excel spreadsheet, everything de-identified. Every time you scan, uh, scan a vial and scan the information as Rochelle uh, showed it to you there, we'll be logging that. So if you're doing some via our scanner application and other um, immunizations and medications once that's uh, available manually, if you will, without our scanner application, we're going to provide you back that data that you are actually using our application with um, so that you can use this spreadsheet to help with the reconciliation process. And again, part of the feedback we've heard is that just that process itself um, can potentially ease some of, the, some of the reconciliation that you're dealing with today. So that's what we're starting with right out of the gate because we have that information available to us. So why not give it right back to you so that you can use it for your needs? Again, just to be very, very clear, when we provide that, um, it is totally de-identified. No patient information is, is along with it. We're simply going to show you uh, that this particular vaccination was given, um, lot number administered by, and so on, and the date that it is. So very specific to that vaccination, but no information about the patient itself. And then the last but not least, of course, is the age-old question is, so how do I get this? What do I do next? Um, and what's the cost going to look like for me? Um, so from a pricing perspective, we have 
heard a lot as we've had many conversations, not only with the next gen client base, but other um, uh, EHR client bases. And um, traditionally, we have sold this application based upon provider. And you know the real feedback that we've received is that it's a very difficult, uh, a difficult variable to measure against when I do this based on provider um, from a pricing perspective. Um, but what is a very straightforward uh, variable to measure against is the transaction. How much do you use the application? right and when you use it that's when you should be paying for it so that is really the model that we've moved to again received a lot of feedback at UGM last year and we've rolled that into our sales process um, as part of our sales process we we'll, we will create for you a personalized return on investment or an ROI document um, we're actually going to ask for a little bit of your assistance it's going to take typically 15 minutes or less we have some very standardized next-gen scripts that we will ask for you to run against your database and what we're doing is we're actually collecting last year's data we want to look at what you did last year from an immunization and a med, uh, a med administration perspective so that we can create a very um, personal return on investment document based upon the usage that you showed and displayed last year so the interpretation is that you're going to do the same potentially or thereabouts this year um, we're going to plug that into the document we're going to base your contract based upon that transactional usage so that you can see all of that together what we have found through the uh, efficiency studies that we've done the feedback that we've heard um, comparing that uh, into um, all of the costs that are associated with this, not just your nurse's wage and benefits and so on of physically delivering uh, the, the actual medication or immunization, but also the research costs and so on. There's some national standards that we can use to compare against this. And so far, for about the past four years as we've done these uh, with our clients, we're seeing roughly a 33% efficiency gain across the line. So we'll actually create you your own ROI document that would show you if you use the application and you had a 30% efficiency gain um, how you know again what the cost of the application is going to be and how quickly it would pay for itself and then honestly we bring the bar down even further and say what if you just gained 10 or 20 percent efficiency right if we just gained 10 or 20 percent efficiency our average is 33 percent which tells you that we have people that are seeing greater efficiency than that and obviously some that are less but let's bring it down to maybe 10 or 20 percent what would that look like from uh, a dollars and cents perspective the great news is, is what we're seeing is at a 30 percent efficiency gain uh, most people are seeing that the application pays for itself in about six months or less and if we bring that down to 20%, it takes roughly nine months to a year, depending upon your usage, where the product actually pays for itself. And then from there, of course, you're, you're only saving more and more. So uh, again, we like to arm you with as much information as you can. And so as part of that process, um, a part of the sales process, excuse me, like I said, we're going to ask for just a little bit of your help. Um, but I think that little bit of help will go a long ways in really helping you frame this up as an, an application for your, for your organization. So with that, I want to turn it over uh, to you and see what we have for questions out there. I know Michelle potentially has been uh, gathering them as we've been talking, so let me open it up for questions. Yeah, we have a bunch of questions that have rolled in. I thought we might start with the folks that have their hand raised. So uh, Jolene, I'm gonna start with you. And Jolene, I'm not sure if you're ready to answer. I just unmuted you. All right, how about Amber? Amber, I'm gonna move on to you um, we just were wondering um, we didn't notice that there was any place to market if it was VFC or um, to put a funding source Michelle can I turn that one over to you yep I was just hopping off of you there so as far as the VFC the orders itself are going to be created in next gen so if it was VFC you would still do that the same way that you would have prior. Um, so there's not, a, 
way for us to order just a VFC, the way that that's done is by choosing the medication and their insurance. when you're actually administering it and yeah. you select it out of inventory. Mm -hmm. Yep, so you still do that the same way and then you're just going to put the entry of the items I showed you, so the amount, the lot, the expiration, et cetera. But that's okay. all done on the order area. Mm -hmm. So scan it. Okay, thank you. Scanner benefits in the back way. Yep. Okay, Ryan, I'm moving on to you. Hi, so I noticed that every time you did a new scan and hovered over the scan field, uh, it popped up the message, you must click in this field. Do you have to actually click back in the scanner field every scan you do, or does it default back to that field? That's a great question. Um, no, you actually do not. It will okay. default back to that section every single time. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Jolene, I'm going to try you again. <laughs> Jolene? All right. Uh, moving on, so let's come through. I think this one should be for you, Rochelle. What happens if the value scan doesn't match the order? So if the vial um, you scan doesn't match the order, it's actually going to send you an alert that says, for example, if I would have scanned in pneumococcal, for that varicella, so we said, wait a minute, that NVC number does not match that um, vial that you just scanned, so it will send an alert to you. Okay, next one for you again, Michelle. Does it work with immunization master files and file maintenance? So if you scan the lot number, it would pre-populate based on what is entered in the master file. Please say that one one more time. I'm not yeah. sure that I follow that. Does one. it work with the immunization master files in file maintenance? That one, I think we're going to have to write that one down and come back with an answer for whoever asked that one, only because I'm not sure what the the full terminology of that question entails. Um, this one's for you. As well, um, how much work is needed to install the product? So typically installs take less, about an hour to install with your team, figure about a half a day, complete start to finish. So very quick and easy to install. And again, the biggest thing is getting that um, API up and going. And Craig, do we provide the scanners? And if so, which ones? Are Another there? great question. Yeah. So as part of the implementation, we're going to help. Uh, we're going to talk through where you're actually delivering these medications and immunizations, so we can help determine how many scanners that you need. Once we've determined that, we don't provide the scanners directly. We do recommend a company um, to actually purchase them through. Uh, they're a reseller of Honeywell scanners. Uh, they are medical grade. They only sell new scanners. There's no refurbished scanners. Um, they're typically guaranteed for for several years, um, and they cover the maintenance and support of those. So we partnered with a group to do that. In the end of the day, purchasing the scanners are up to you. We will share that we have had clients actually go out to Amazon and find that $99 scanner and say, I'm just going to run with that and unfortunately, you know, have it work uh, for a while and then all of a sudden stop working. There's no one to support it and so on. So although um, the Honeywell scanners tend to be a bit more expensive in the front, uh, we have seen over the past four years of delivering this application, they pay for themselves in the long run. Okay, switching over. Victor, are you ready for your question? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, okay, I just wanted to go back on the, uh, I know someone mentioned about the VFC. Um, I just had a question uh, on that one. Um, so whenever you're uh, scanning in the information, like the NDC and all that information, 
you're having to open up the application, uh, the barcode application, and it'll scan in all that information, correct? And now the VFC reason, though, that information is entered in the same area where the NDC number is entered in. Uh, like here in our practice, we have our MAs and nurses that enter that information in. So my question is, if all the information will be entered on the barcode app, are they going to have to go back the old way just to enter the VFC information? So traditionally, no. We like to um, make sure that all of that information comes in there. Right now, the software is not accounting for some of those specific VFCs if you're doing it in a different area other than the order. Um, but we always, and I say this from the old script side of things, for VFC and how we've done a lot of clinics, we have everything done right within that same space. So. Okay, so as of now, uh, they're still going to have to uh, use the same uh, process that they did before, but only now, I guess, with this one, they'll have to access both applications or both templates. I'm not sure if, my, uh, if you understand my question. Yeah, because you're doing, so the other ones were a different template, right, for your VFC? So right now, the way that our practice does it is uh, the provider will order the immunization and will task it to the MA or the nurse. Uh, the nurse okay. will get the information in their inbox and they'll access the orders module uh, to open up the um, uh, the immunization order and then add the, the, um, the uh, you know, the NDC number, the lot number, all that information. Um, that's currently where it's done along with the VFC reason and the funding source. So once they do that, they just save it and it completes the order. So now you, by using the barcode app, my question is if, they're going to have to go to use the barcode uh, template to uh, scan in the uh, lot number NDC and then save it and then go into the order uh, that the provider sent to the nurse or MA to enter the funding uh, source and the VSD reason. Yeah, so that's, that's something that we'll be working on getting up and going. Like I said, our goal is to have all that VFC, VIS, all those extra things that you also can put within an order within that screen as well. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, that's great feedback. Thank you for that. And uh, I know Michelle is able to keep track of who's asking the questions. Um, uh, so we would love, again, to continue to hear your feedback. Um, our goal is to not do what you just described, right? To be, have to go back to a template to add in an extra one or two pieces of data. Um, from an efficiency perspective, we just threw it all right out the window, right? So our, our absolute goal is to continue to learn with you um, in, in your specific workflows and understand, hey, I have these two extra things for these variety of workflows, um, and so how can we make this more efficient? So again, look for us to reach out to you, and we'd love to even spend 10 minutes and do a quick screen share to really just see what your workflow looks like um, so that we can learn and make sure that we're answering that question for you. Thank you. Okay, back to scanners. Uh, question came in, does every computer need a scanner? Oh, great question, the answer is no. So again, it's going to be, uh, Rochelle, what's the, the rule of thumb uh, that we use for scanners to, to um, locations? So it really varies, um, and I, I get this question a lot. So I'll, I'll kind of give you a couple examples of the clinics that we're currently within. So some clinics have computers right within the actual um, exam room. And so if they have computers, generally they're putting a scanner in there because they then can just throw all their sharps right within the sharps after it's documented. We have other clinics that don't have that. They have more of like a nursing pod or a nursing workstation. And so those scanners traditionally will be out there within those working stations. When I see the working stations, I generally see either a one-to-one -one or a one-to-two ratio on the scanners. All the scanners are plug-and-play. Um, so if you have a laptop floating around, if you have a desktop, et cetera, it's the accessibility of that and how easy it is, you know, one user using it or two users. So we really have a wide variety overall, and it's really what's going to be best for your workflow. 
Michelle, here's another one for you on in inventory. <clears throat> when we receive a new shipment of vaccines, how do we enter the new inventory to the system? And will it be tracking the law and expiration dates from this point? Well, I'm going to add, as, as Craig mentioned before, we have not yet started the inventory piece. However, what I am going to say is the 2D barcode right on the vial. So if it's the square QR code, um, that can already contains the NDC, the lot, and the expiration. So if you're getting, you switch manufacturers, et cetera, already that knows, hey, I need to go put this new NDC number in because it's a new, obviously, QR code that's associated with it. So as far as the inventory side, um, like we said, we're still in kind of the discovery phase of that. And so you can follow everything that Craig said and let us know, and we'd love to hear more. Okay, and one came in, probably for you and both, Michelle. Does this work with Citrix, or do you have to have a remote scan license? Oh, I love this question. 100% it works with Citrix. It works with um, Automatic Connect. It works with VPN, pretty much however. Um, it literally does not even need drivers to update. So you can plug and play and it will start. The only thing that I've ever had to do with a clinic is provide them a little carriage return barcode so that um, this was a question that got asked before. Does that scanner always go the cursor back in there? And the answer is yes, because as soon as it scans, it hits enter in the background through the scanner auto populates everything and it comes right back to that scanner. So super easy to set up, definitely works with Citrix or any other outlying um, VPN connection, et cetera. I have about them all, VM. Okay, um, when are we releasing the therapeutic meds portion? Again, right now, uh the best I can give you is fall of 2019. We are in the middle of, of that uh, development work right now. Um, I don't want to give an exact date. Uh, I can tell you, you know, again, we're, we have targeted sprints and releases uh, weekly right now. Um, but uh, we are committing to the Med Administration here in the fall um, prior to UGM. So that is our commitment is to have this uh, deployed and and honestly our commitment to NextGen as a partner um, is to have this piece um, developed and deployed prior to UGM. Okay, I'm going to move back over the phone. Matt, are you ready with your question? Yes, hi. Um, I just have a, a couple of questions. One, I didn't really get whether or not you were scanning the actual vaccine. Are you do, Is that how you're doing that? Yeah, so there's actually a, yeah, there's a, there's a barcode right within the vaccine itself. And so right. you okay. actually scan that traditional little tiny barcode. Yep. Okay. And then if it's able to pull up the NDC number, wouldn't it be able to pull up the manufacturer and the uh, dosage as well? It's a great question. However, the answer is no, because of the way that CDC came across with that, they only required them to put in the NDC, the lot, and the expiration. So that barcode that we're actually scanning does not contain that manufacturer or the dose. Okay. And that's more driven from CDC, not us. We would love for that. That would be the best Christmas present ever for me. Just because I get qu that question a lot, so. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, Ryan, I'm going to switch back over to you. Do you have a follow-up question? Uh, no, I did not. Okay. Um, <clears throat> going back over to pricing and how do we get started, Craig? Um, someone asked if. Hold on, give me one second. Um, can contracts be done per provider or location? And how do we get started? 
Great comments. question. So uh, as it stands today, um, again, we're going to be generating the contract statement of works or SOW. I just try to throw all the lingo out there. Um, you're you're going to hear any or all of the above from us. Uh, we're going to generate uh, based on the transactional volumes and what we see. Um, we have entered into some agreements that yes, are by a location or by a provider. Um, so again, we are trying to standardize our pricing as we move forward. Um, conversations are always open. So I would have that very specific uh, conversation um, when that time comes, just to see where it is and what the drive uh, is for. Um, from uh, getting started, um, again, uh, the very next step in the process would be uh, to reach out to Stacy uh, and reach out after after this. I'm just going to move ahead one slide here real quick um, to show Stacy Durant. She's our sales specialist dedicated to the barcode reader application. Um, so you can see her information here. You're going to be receiving some follow-up uh, from this the webinar. And again, you'll have her email and phone number on there as well. Um, but again, very quickly, we can uh, get together, we can gather some information for, uh, from you and your organization and prepare uh, that contract for you. And Rochelle, from an implementation standpoint, what will you need from me or my clinic to get this up and running? Another good um, question. This one's a little bit more complex um, in the respect that generally it'll take a little bit of a couple of teams there. I like to say it'll take IT team because they'll have to help get the server set up, um, get that um, access to next gen, those types of things. And then on the other side of it, the spectrum is more of the clinical team knowing um, that we have to do a training session. We're going to need to determine all those barcodes that you're going to need for the manufacturers, the site, those kind of things, some testing, and then roll out to clinics. So um, typically, um, real life scenario, I've had one clinic that the week before October 1st, knowing flu season was starting, saying we need to roll this out. And they rolled it out the week before. So everybody was on board. Everybody moved very quickly through it. Um, I've had another clinic with lots of different sites. And when I say lots, I think we're up to 57 different clinics that they've enrolled or up what they did so far. And that one's taken, um, each site takes about two and a half, three weeks to roll out. So just to kind of give you a perspective of different types of rollout, small clinics versus larger. And I know Craig kind of went through that, but overall, pretty easy, easy to use, and end users generally take it up within typical about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, and this one's more for me. Are we going to be able to share this with our other employees? And that's yes. I will be sending out again the link to this webinar and also the presentation materials later this week so you can share. Thanks again for your great attention and spending an hour with us. Uh, hopefully, we've uh, been able to answer the questions that you had. Uh, should anything come up, again, you're going to hear from Michelle, you're going to hear from Stacy. Please reach out to any of us. Rochelle and my co uh, contact information will be in there as well. Thank you again for t uh, spending the time and have a great day.